they charge down. There's no lines there. They're every man for himself as they go through turn one for the first time. And Peter Hickman got a good start in that one too. He was right up level with the front row as they uh, went underneath the bridge and down in towards turn one for the first time. So uh, let's see what uh, happens now as they make their way around through turn two and out onto uh, the Bass Strait coming round to Stoner Corner. I think it's Mick Williams that's got a pretty handy lead. Oh, is it Sean Giles that actually leads them through turn one? Well, the three times Australian Superbike champion has, uh, he's got the clear track that he wanted, Braxy. He certainly has, and uh, that's what Giles Hickman in second position, McWilliams in third, then it's Chaz Hearn, Jed Metcher, Paul Byrne, Alex Billis has got a shocker, he's been swamped in seventh, Glenn Richards, John McGuinness, and Derek Shields there in tenth, Hillio 11, Steve Martin, David Johnson, Cummings, Mooney, and Hinks in up the 16th position as they go storming up the hill for the first time, these big booming to got nearer machines. Sean Giles, can he maintain the rage? Is anybody going to get him? But I reckon Peter Hickman. Oh, he's already got about a six bike length lead as they come over Lukey Hodge for the first time. McGuinness already have, having the line going into um, Mc, uh, through Hickman. Hearn moving up the third position. So the Aussies on fire at the most moment. Aussies first, third and fifth and seventh. The rest of them filled up with the UK guys except for sixth position Paul Bird as they come onto the straight for the first time. I think... Uh Jeremy McWilliams will be slightly smiling under his helmet seeing Gilesy out there as a bit of a character dangle. Well, Peter Hickman gets a bit of a high speed wobble down the front straight. Chaz Hearn gets into his slipstream as they come down there now and into uh, turn one. It is still Giles that leads. The gap as they came across the line, 0.6 of a second, a 144.3 from a standing start for Sean Giles on bike number 19, the Trevor Birrell prepared Katana. Now just looking to see where the likes of uh, Johnny Allen on the TZ750 is as well. I think he was in the top 15 there soon. I'll tell you what, Giles, he's going to have to fight for it. They're starting to close him down through the inside. Was that Chad's hurt? McWilliams has moved into second position. I think he has as they come down into Honda Corner for the second time. So it's a now it's a quartet. No, it could be a, a six tuplet of riders as they battle for the lead. What a great sight here at Phillip Island. Was that Jed Metzger out wide on the entry into uh, into turn four? Carried a lot of corner speed around the outside, but he's got his teammate uh, Chaz Hearn right in front of him as well as they fire up the hill. Now they've probably pegged it back a fraction on Sean Giles as they uh, come out of uh, Siberia. The gap's down to 0.4 of a second as they disappear behind the trees. Just looking back in the field. Derek Shields, the second of the Irish riders, is in eighth position right behind his teammate uh, Paul Byrne. So good points oh. there for the Irish. John McGuinness in tenth and uh, putting on a good ride as well. The brawl's about to start, guys. This is about it. McWilliams is stalking Sean Giles. They're good mates off the track, but they turn into axe murders when they put a helmet on. And it's going to intensify as they come down to complete lap number two. The first flying lap. And look at them close up the corner speed of McWilliams as he closes right up onto the ducktail of the katana of Sean Giles. Now the drag down Gardner straight commences yet again. Well, Giles, he's right down on head on the tank as uh, Mick Williams pulls out of his slipstream, uses the advantage of the full fairing to blast his way past. Hickman oh. can't get past Giles, who holds station in second position as they go through turn one. First flying lap of a 37.347 for McWilliams, 273 top speed, but Hickman 274, Giles 258. Yeah, so Giles is giving away a fair, what's that, 15 k's an hour in top speed to... Massive uh, speed advantage to the full fairing bikes, isn't it? Yep, McWilliams uh, leads them down and probably pulled out a uh, couple of bike length lead as they head down towards turn four. And Hickman comes up the inside of Giles, can he go past? Uh, I think does. he squeezes his way past on the way into turn four. Well, he's seen his teammate leading the ra every race so far, so he's, he's led all bar one and a half laps as uh, Jerry McWilliams. And I think Hickman wants a piece of this pie as well, as Jed Mitchell's in four, Chaz Hearn, Paul Byrne, Glenn Mitchell's, Derek Shields, Alex Phyllis back to ninth position, so maybe those fuel starvation problems still afflicting the machine. Up to eighth though, McGuinness in tenth, Cummings in eleventh, Steve Martin Lead in twelfth. Lead nearly a second now. Oof. So they come down now into um, the first split, third split, and McWilliams now, he's got the lead again, and look at the lead he's pulled out in just on half a lap. Oh, look at that battle. What is it? Back for about fifth and sixth position between Chaz Hearn and Glenn Richards. They are going hard at it down in towards uh, turn 10 there. 
and they're still in very close company and right behind them is Paul Byrne as well the leading Irish rider look at the corner speed of the McIntosh Suzuki as he tries to go around the outside of Glenn Richards <laughs> through turn 12 oh that's a big move but uh, Jeremy McWilliams has pulled out in the uh, in the lead from Pete Hickman Giles he's not given up shaking his head as he went across the line I'm not sure what was going on there and Alex Phyllis on the comeback trail too guys he moved up the position there on bike number 20 he's up the seventh position so maybe just a little mistake for him. He's done his fastest lap done as well. Done the fastest lap as well. A 36.388. That is a smash the lap record. Well, that's wow. 0.6 of a second off the lap record. And look at that uh, 266 k's an hour. Giles, he up to 269 k's an hour. Maybe that's why he was wobbling his head. He couldn't keep it under control. That's William that's said, I'll go out and have a bit of fun in the time. next two races. Talk about having a bit of fun just smashing the lap record on his second flying lap as we approach half race distance. No, that was actually Sean Giles' Sean lap record. Giles just, lap record. And that was on a resurfa a freshly resurfaced track, which and makes that time even more impressive. And maybe it. Sean Giles has got a timing monitor on his bike. He just saw that Jeremy had broken the lap record. That's why he was shaking his head down the straight. <laughs> oh, maybe. <laughs> just as he saw the thing disappearing into the distance, as we wait to see them come up over the hill for the fourth time. McWilliams with a lead now of 1.5 seconds. It's a bit bigger now. I think it's getting closer to two seconds over his teammate, Peter Hickman. You know what it might also be too, Braxy, is he knows how fast Peter Hickman has been towards the end of the race. He wants to make oh. sure he gets the lead as big as he can. Is that Steve Martin staking to start to make his way forward as well? No, it's Al Phyllis on the uh, the Arnold's Fruit Market machine. He's uh, right in the middle of that battle as well. Well, he Steve's should. got the lap time there. I don't think he's just quite um, coming through the pack in that next bunch. No, he's getting, he hasn't been getting the good starts. He's still doing pretty competitive time. So as we come down to complete lap number four, McWilliams from Hickman, oh, then Giles. Giles and then Chaz Hearn and Glenn Richards is going to give him a bit of a set to as well. Giles is definitely not giving up. You know, he's no. right on the back of Peter Hickman. A 37.3 for McWilliams then and a 38 flat for Sean Giles. Well, five, th five hundredths of a second quicker than Hickman. He's not going to make much of an inroad into uh, Hickman's second position. Look at top, Giles' top speed. I think that's 266, 267, 268 in three consecutive laps for uh, for Giles. And you wonder Happy why he gets off the bike. Too. His arms are another three foot longer <laughs> and he's trying to hang on to the thing with no fairy to protect him from the wind. But McWilliams again, mate, he's in a class of his own this weekend as is Jez Mack. Oh, oh, is that someone that run on at I turn four? Richards. Is that Richards? Yeah. I think it yep. is on the Harris. He's having a Richard time. He wasn't happy yesterday oh, afternoon. And that's out problems. of fifth position too. So that so. that'll promote Paul Byrne up into a fifth position. And that's Phyllis. some good points for the Aussies there. Yep. So McWilliams now leading by nearly two and a half seconds as we come down to complete lap number five. They'll get the last lap board at the end of this circuit. In fact, what that will mean is that the next point scoring rider after McWilliams and Hickman is John McGinn is back in ninth position. As they come now through MG Corner. Unfortunately for Glenn, Glenn Richards, that's a tragedy for him to um, battle it out because he was expecting, he wanted to get a top three result. He said to me yesterday afternoon, he said, well, he's had a bit of a, a bad time here at the Phillip Island International Classic. But the last lap board is being displayed. Jerry Memory Williams, he's on track. He's got 4.45 kilometres to make it three from three and take a stranglehold on the Ken Wooden Petrol Trophy with Peter Hickman in second. Jolsey there. Oh, Al, Phyllis, Al Phyllis and Paul Byrne having a ding-dong battle there. Phyllis pulled out of the slipstream. So did Steve Martin down the straight there. He just drafted three, two people down there into turn one. So some good points coming up here for the Aussies. He's just got to try and get ahead of Connor Cummings and John McGuinness ahead of him. They're in positions nine and ten, and they are the second and third, sorry, the third and fourth point scoring riders from the UK team. So uh, good points for both of those teams. Ireland are on track for some good points with Paul Byrne in fifth position. And uh, Derek Shields now up to seventh as well. I tell you what, if any of the, the Aussies or the UK team have a debacle in the uh, last league, the Irish are going to be ready to pounce on them. Absolutely. But uh, McWilliams, though, what can anybody do to stop the marauding Northern Irishman at the moment? Dave Johnson up into 13th too. Braxy, good points for the Irish there as the third point scoring rider. Well, you know, hopefully the clutch lasts the distance this time with uh, less than half a lap to go. Al, Al Phyllis definitely makes it exciting there, I'm giving it to the, the two T-Rex racing team there. <laughs> <coughs> now our leader coming through now, should be coming back into view on QE does, Jeremy McWilliams over the MG for the final time for this morning, for the final six lap dash this afternoon. And um, that state, it's maintained two seconds for pretty constant. 1.7 seconds Hickman's got net back to it, but I think that Williams has just been a bit more relaxed on the throttle in this final lap, knowing that he has got 
three from three and another step closer to taking the Ken Wooden Trophy and also for the UK for the third time to take out the international challenge as he comes onto the straight ladies and gentlemen put your hands together Jesmack, Jerry Mimmy Williams from Peter Hickman, Sean Giles leading the way for the Aussies. Look at this battle for the three weights. Oh, Alex Billis skies his way through to claim fourth position from Jed Bench and Paul Byrne. Derek Shields, Steve Martin up the eighth position. Good result for him. Good result for the